everybody! Uh, this is my last gear list for my through hike on the Appalachian Trail. Um, I'm just gonna go through everything that I ended with. I switched a few things in May around New York area because I was able to come home for a cruise and I made a few switches and I'll tell you whether I liked them or not. So two things that I don't have, which were two of the switches I made, are my checking poles. They were black diamond. They were some cork kind. I don't remember the whole name. They were having a sale and they were blue, but I took them back to REI just to see if I could get the handles replaced, the, the straps. Um, those were coming apart really fast and they just replaced the whole thing for me so they're sending those to me this week. Uh, I also replaced my pack. I got the Osprey Kite 46 liter. Yeah. Um, I hated it. So I returned it as soon as I got the chance. It just didn't fit me well. I should have stuck with the pack that I had in the beginning. I only switched because I didn't need that much room anymore and the pack that I had, the Osprey Aura Anti-Gravity, was um, a little too big because there was a spot hitting the back of my head that was just really irritating me. So I went ahead and switched. Um, let's see, start with my tent. I kept the Big Agnes Flight Creek UL2. The only problem I had was that the package that it came in ripped, so I just put duct tape over it. No biggie. Um, I loved it. I'm just really glad that I had the two-person tent because I could put my pack in my tent at night and not worry about it getting wet or messed with or anything from other people or animals. And I had a lot more room to sprawl out in. Uh, the tent poles and the stakes are in here. Definitely carry those the whole way. I did switch my air mattress when my best friend came out to hike with me. I let her use my Big Agnes uh, Q-Core and I just went ahead and bought the $20 Thermarest Z light, and I just kept this and sent the other one home with her because it saved a whole pound, and I had no problem sleeping on this whatsoever. Um, a lot of people, it was a very popular pad, but some people just can't sleep on it, so definitely try it out at REI before you commit to that. Um, my pillow, I kept since I bought it at the NOC. I can't sleep without a pillow, so I was really glad I carried this the entire way. I'll go through my clothes. Uh, oh, and I had the footprint for my tent as well. Um, I had three pairs of socks, two to hike in and one to sleep in. These are my sleep socks. I could have sent these home. I just didn't want to pay to send them home, so I kept them. But I didn't need them um, after New York. They just, it wasn't cold enough for them. So I carried them anyways. Um, my favorite pair of socks were my Njinji socks, the toe socks. I hiked with these every single day until they got really, really smelly or were soaking wet. And I switched into my just spare pair of cushioned socks from REI. They were like 12 bucks, and I really liked these as well, but the toe socks were my favorite. I had one hiking tank top the entire way. Um, I had it before the trail. I think it's Dan Skin brand, and I loved it. It held up. A lot of people had holes in their shirts and t-shirts and whatnot that they had, but mine worked out just fine. I sent my long sleeve shirt home because there was absolutely no need for that in the summer. So that and my leggings I sent home. I didn't hike with leggings the last part of the trip. My sleep shirt. Just so happened to be the same color as my hiking shirt, but I had that tank top to switch into at night. I kept my Patagonia Barely There bra the entire way. I loved it. It was super comfy, and it doesn't dry fast. That's the only thing I have bad to say about this, is that it will be soaking wet all night if you take it off. So you have to sleep with it on to have your body heat dry it at night, but I liked it. It was really comfy. I kept my ex officio Manta Ray boxers. Uh, these are so comfy. They're dudes, obviously, but um, way better than the spandex that I started off with. They breathe more and they're um, more comfortable. I got another pair of shorts at Walmart for like seven bucks in, um, so I don't know, one of the towns. And I just had these in case my other ones were really dirty or um, super soaked. 
but I didn't ever have the wet problem with these. These Columbia pants that I got in Damascus were fantastic. They dried so quick. So they were really helpful for Maine and the north where there was a lot of lakes and ponds to jump into. My puffy jacket I kept with me the entire way, the Patagonia Nano Puff. It was everything that I needed in a puffy jacket and I love it. I did switch my rain jacket, thankfully, finally. Oh my gosh, I enjoyed hiking in the rain so much more after I got this. Uh, it's the Marmet Precip. And it's got pit zips, and it's super comfy, and, well, as comfy as a rain jacket can be. But it kept me way warmer and way more dry than my dumb little mist jacking kept. Um, I have a bug net, which is, like, completely, 100% necessary. Freaking black flies and mosquitoes and anything just flies right in your face and in your ear. And it's really agitating when you're hiking or even just trying to eat at camp. But um, I was really glad I bought that. My buff. I love my buff. I kept it the entire way. And uh, it's weird. Like, people would recognize me because of my buff. They're like, oh my gosh, like, you had a YouTube. I'm like, yeah, had one. Um, but they recognized me because I had my buff on. That was really funny. I love it. It was... Um, Worked well to keep the sweat out of my eyes, the bugs out of my ears, um, and like a wash rag for my face at night when I wanted to rinse this out in the creek and rinse my face off as well. Okay. I stuffed all of my clothes into a stuff sack that I also got just to make more room in the smaller pack. Um, this is obviously going to add a couple ounces or whatnot to your pack rather than like a plastic bag which would work just fine to put your clothes in, but this helped me have a little bit more room in the 46 liter pack I had. I kept my camp shoes the entire way. They were so comfy. The Sanook yoga mat sandals. So I was really glad I got those instead of Crocs. Um, I got one more pair of shoes before I summoned Katahdin. These I got in Hanover, New Hampshire. Um, my other ones were just worn so bad and they were gonna rip any day but this was my only option in Hanover so if you're watching this and you're gonna get new shoes in Hanover you have one option ladies the North Face shoes and I liked them I liked them a lot um, my second pair of shoes were my favorite my New Balance ones but these are better than the Solomons in my opinion um, yeah I mean the, all the other shoes were Gore-Tex which I didn't want they would keep in the water and my feet would have been destroyed but I liked these a lot, so. Last pair of shoes. I had my, um, can't think. Knee brace with me the whole way. It started to wear towards the end, so I, there was no point. It kept slipping off my knee. I have smaller legs than the normal person, I guess, who wears these, but it was one size fits all, and I mean, it did its job for a while. Let's see, my food bag. I kept with my um, odor resistant Ziploc inside of it, and then just the Sea to Summit bag I kept the whole way. I did send home my paracord and carabiner because we didn't need two to bear bag. We would just clip it on to someone else's or each other's, so I sent mine home. Uh, Oh, I did buy another tank top at an ice cream shop, which is still really dirty right now. But I hiked in this for a few days because that other pack was rubbing my shoulders raw. So I needed something to protect my shoulders, and this was thick enough to do that. And my bandana, which is also still dirty, that I kept. My snot rag, so this is really gross right now. But, uh, yeah, I definitely recommend having a snot rag on the AT. And my... Texas beer hat. Um, the hat kept the mosquito net elevated off of my face and would keep the sun out of my face as well on super sunny days. So I have that. And the rest of my little things. I have my stuff sack still that I used for my big Agnes just because it worked really well to keep my uh, quilt in. I did keep my quilt the entire
entire way, the enlightened equipment. It probably would have been too hot there the last week had I stayed out longer because it got really toasty outside, but um, I didn't see a need to switch, so I kept it. I did have my rain pants sent back to me for the whites. Uh, did I need them? Probably not, but I was really glad I had them for the wind. Uh, I would have survived without them though. I, we had perfect weather in the whites. Absolutely gorgeous, perfect weather, which is like unheard of, but we got really lucky. And so I guess I was glad I got these sent back to me. They're just frog togs, 20 bucks, and I liked them a lot. So let's see. This one. I kept my um, soap sleeping bag liner the whole way too. Did I need this either? Nope, probably not. But I kind of used it as another pillow too because I usually sleep with 20 pillows at home and it was like a comfort item I think for me so I just kept it. And if my sleeping bag got too hot I would shimmy into that and make it work. Um, I kept the Sawyer squeeze that I bought. I love it. I'm so 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 glad I switched from this to this from the Sawyer or the Platypus Gravity Work System. And I just had one of the bags that I would put in my bag and screw on the camelback to it. And I kept my emoji clip with me the whole way too since Georgia. Um, our little crew had cupcakes that had them all on there and we said we were going to take them to Katahdin. And I did. I don't know if anybody else did, but I'm really glad this guy stuck with me the whole way. So, kept that. I like it much better than just having smart water bottles to screw this on. I did that as well to filter water for like mixed drinks and whatever, like my Gatorade and stuff. But um, for the most part, I would just squeeze it, the clean water, into the pack. And I had a Talenti cup for my stove-free cooking. I would do overnight oats in this and my mixed drinks like the Gatorade and the Mio's that I had for flavored water and iced, iced coffee, cold coffee in the morning. But this was fantastic. Soup held up really great, never had a problem. Um, I left my spork, sadly, in my pack that I returned to REI and I called and asked them if they had it and they said they don't. So maybe someone found a treasure and they'll get to use a spork that made it on the entire AT. So y'all enjoy whoever finds it. Um, I also left my ibuprofen and my um, sleeping pills in that pack, so someone's going to have a good night, I guess, pain-free, and sleep really well while eating ice cream with my spork that I miss. But um, that was the extent of my first aid kit. I had ibuprofen and sleeping pills and like maybe a band-aid in there, but that was it. I didn't carry anything else. Um, I got Q-tips though. I love Q-tips. I did buy deodorant like the last week just because I knew I was going to need it after the trail too. So I had the deodorant in there. Um, a little mirror. Check my back for ticks. And then toothbrush. And I ran out of toothpaste the last day on the trail. So that was a miracle. But my little toothbrush. I had nail clippers and tweezers. And that was my hygiene kit. And I had my brush that I had in the video before this. If you're wondering what it was, it's just a small lightweight brush that's somewhere over there. I don't know. But I kept that and my little AT tag I kept on my pack. That weighs nothing. And then I didn't have all this in here. I didn't have these straps. I just had bug spray, 100 deep. Uh, I probably have cancer now or something, but it worked. This stuff was fantastic. Uh, you walked through clouds of mosquitoes in Maine and it was unbearable. So when I got to Shaw's, I bought some bug spray for the 100 mile wilderness and chapstick. I had a pen and a pencil. So I could journal, a journal that I filled up, and you're not supposed to, but I had to steal a piece or two from the logbooks because I had a journal at night and I was almost there. I had my AT passport that is not full, but that's okay. Um, 
headphones and like a quarter of a quarter of the AWOL guide. Just like the last part from the White Mountains to Katani. And that was what I ended with. Um, anything else? Oh, right in front of me. That's what it was. My headlamp. I kept my headlamp the whole way. I'm pretty sure it's from Walmart. Um, I'm glad I figured out that if you just turn a battery around that you can go the entire trail with three batteries instead of like switching them in every town because it would turn on when I wasn't paying attention in my pack and the batteries would die. But um, that is what I ended the AT with. I summited Katahdin on July 1st and I summited with Long Haul who I met on the first night with a few of the others. Um, Shark Bite, if you've been following my blog or my Instagram or anything, you know who I'm talking about. Uh, Shark Bite summoned Katahdin the morning that we did as well. He got up there early, early, and we didn't make it there until noon. Um, but so it was really nice to summon it with the people that I hiked the whole trail with. Um, oh! I'm sure you've seen this in the back. And if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook too, then you've seen this already, but since my trail name is Snap and I snapped my poles on like the fourth or fifth day of the trail and Leonard had gifted me with these awesome trekking poles which I hiked with up until Vermont and one of them just started sliding and my friend needed trekking poles as well when she came out so I went ahead and just bought the black diamond ones. But um, he gifted me those and he kept my trekking poles that I snapped on the first week and made the most amazing gift I think any through hiker could have ever gotten. He made a little plaque for my name and it's so weird reading that I'm a 2017 through hiker. I'm really super excited and thank y'all for watching and following along. I enjoyed reading y'all's comments and Go hike the AT.